Hey folks, Jonathan here. We've got two things I want to do. Uh, one thing is I'm going to announce who won our little contest of uh, guess the price for the tractor. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to do uh, some runner-up here. And runners-up don't win anything. Uh, first we've got Goomer with 15 coconuts. He was a little bit low. And let me see, Joey's Junkyard, three fried chickens and a Coke. That was high. And let me see. Gary White with 42,662 rubles, which I never checked to see what that was valued at, but that sounds high anyway, which I don't know. Uh, let me see. Everybody that picked a $850, uh, you're all runners up. You're close. Uh, and then Spike, 18801, picked 1800 or picked $850 plus some change and we thought maybe that he was going to be the winner but there was uh, two people that came close but one that actually won it. Uh, well we did have uh, Stony Burke which picked 55,000 uh, pennies but uh, Dr. not Frankenstein but Dr. Frankenstein he was at $852.37, but the actual winner that won is John Barfield, and he picked $852, and how much I had in that tractor was $851.47, so he was 53 cents off. Now, he was over, but my rules are the closest. I don't care if anybody's over or not, and uh, what I need you to do is uh, message me on YouTube and we need to do it through YouTube because that way I'll be able to see your your name on there to make sure that it's you and uh, I'm gonna send you a gift certificate but I want you to make a choice of whether you want a Walmart gift certificate or a tractor supply gift certificate. and uh, I'm not gonna tell you how much but uh, you'll like it and uh, I really appreciate that I enjoyed that uh, you know what looking at the prices and, and looking to see you know everywhere from you know free to you know thirty five hundred dollars I mean it's just it just shows you that you know different people think different on stuff you know some people look at the tractor as being junk and some people look at it as being decent I figure it this way the loader with it being an American loader is probably worth what I paid for the tractor uh, the eight hundred dollars and you know the tractor is sort of free so you know I can uh, use it and believe it or not you probably already watched the video of this axle, uh, the Ford engine, the big block Ford. It's either a 429 or 460 and the C6 transmission. I picked up with that tractor. So the loader does a really good job. It, uh, it had plenty of power to pick it up, move it around, no problem. And uh, I don't know what it weighs, but you know, they're, they're not light. But uh, I wouldn't trust being anywhere under it or around it. You know, I trust my forklift a lot more. But, uh, but it did do it. But uh, what I want to talk about. Uh, I've had, you know, over the last well, couple of years, I guess I've been doing this, I've had some people that was interested in, and it could be because they was interested in getting into the record business, but they asked me how I got into the record business. And I could probably make this about a five hour, six hour long video, but I'm going to try to run through this as quick as I can. And uh, so everybody can, you know, get an idea of, uh, of what I've done and, and how I got, you know, actually where I'm at. And uh, I'm not saying I'm anywhere, but I'm, I'm a little further than I was before. I tell people, you know, I was, I was born with absolutely nothing, and I still got half of it left. So, uh, But here's the deal. I came down here from West Virginia in 1989, and uh, there's no jobs up there. Uh, down here, you know, we was told there was jobs. And when I got down here, you know, the people that are actually here will tell you there's no jobs. But, you know, people up in West Virginia would say, you know, hey, there's jobs down there in North Carolina. But anyway, come down, uh, didn't have a car. Ba basically what I had was a trash bag with some clothes in it. And I hitched a ride with uh, my, my sister and brother-in-law and made it down here and... One thing, I didn't have a car, but I didn't mind riding a bicycle. Uh, I actually, have, I've been known to ride 22 miles and to go see my cousins in West Virginia up and down the mountains. 
And uh, believe it or not, I raced BMX and was in the National Bicycle League. Uh, won a lot, I, you know. I, I, I was pretty good at it and probably should have stuck with it. But, you know, I always quit something I'm really good at to go find something I'm not good at so I can get better at it, if that makes any sense. But anyway, uh, came down, got a job at Burger King. And, you know, a lot of people down here especially would laugh at somebody working at Burger King. In West Virginia, when I was there, I don't know how it is now, but when I was there, you know, a Burger King job wasn't a job that you would uh, laugh at anybody having. Uh, McDonald's, whatever. A lot of the people that got jobs there either uh, stayed there until they retired or they stayed there until they got a job at DuPont or, you know, one of the Owens, Illinois, one of the big glass plants, something like that. So nobody ever looked down on you for working at McDonald's. I've never looked down on anybody for working anywhere. Don't matter to me. I mean, if they're working, they're working. But uh, went to work at Burger King. I put an application in, and it was like the next day I was, you know, working. And was amazed. I couldn't believe it because, you know, to me that was a job. It was money. So I worked there and, and you know, picked up an old, uh, actually an old Volkswagen Beetle. But uh, uh, started driving it. Uh, Found out Pizza Hut paid more. So I went to Pizza Hut, worked there, and then I found out that Golden Poultry, which is a chicken plant, paid more. So I went to work there. And I worked in a freezer, second shift. Uh, so cold that I didn't leave at lunchtime. I would just go in and stay until it was time to leave. And because you would start thawing out, your toes would thaw out, and you'd really start hurting. So, uh, but I, I, I worked there, uh, jumped to a few other jobs. I worked at uh, Magnetic Morelli. Um, uh, Reman and carburetors, uh, and uh, let me see, Tallamore Golf Course. I was the mechanic for the golf course. Uh, I worked for Yamaha Golf Carts. I left Yamaha to go to Tallamore because it paid more. I left Tallamore to go to Champion Mobile Homes because it paid more. I quit doing mechanic work, started uh, doing residential crown molding uh, in the in the you know big double wides, the modulars and stuff, and uh, started uh, laying carpet, hanging doors. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever they needed me to do. And, you know, I took a lot of pride in my work. And, you know, uh, I, I tried to, to earn the money I made. And I usually cared more than the bosses. And that was usually what really bothered me the most is, you know, I cared about the business more than what the owner cared about the business. But, uh, but I broke my ankle and didn't know that you could get workman's comp. And, uh, Went to the hospital. I broke it at work. Uh, was on crutches, and they wouldn't let me go back to work. Well, I didn't want to, you know, hang out, lay out, not do nothing. I wanted to work. So, uh, since I couldn't go back to work with on crutches and a doctor's note, I went and got another job, and got a job working for a guy. Uh, still friends with that man. He uh, he was a good guy. Uh, I told him that after working for him, I never wanted to work for anybody else again. That's how bad he was, but, you know, as a joke. He taught me a lot. He had a record service, uh, mainly a garage. You know, I was turning wrenches again. And, uh, you know, uh, done a little bit of everything. Tires, front end alignments, you know, change engines, you know, anything. Whatever they needed. And, uh, anyway, at nighttime, he wouldn't, uh, he didn't want to go out. So I would take a wrecker home with me, and, you know, he done trip away, and the base pay was $15, and I got a third. So I would make five bucks. And he told me one day, he said, you know, you're going to do good. You're going to make it. He said, you're the only person I ever had that would get out of bed at three in the morning, you know, six inches of snow, cold, whatever, uh, drive 20 miles, change a tire, and drive back home 20 miles and for five bucks. But, uh, you know, it was his fuel. And, well, I've just been sleeping anyway, so I didn't mind it. Uh, you know, it was all about, you know, making the money, paying the bills and stuff. But, uh... I had a, a couple fast cars, uh, 82 Camaro, I had a Trans Am that was a, a smoking and bandit car. But I, I traded that, that Trans Am, and I had a lot of people tell me I was crazy. I traded that Trans Am for the front half of a 62 GMC two-ton truck with no motor transmission and the back half of a 1946 International. And uh, it had a uh, house moving bed on it with a boom, no winch, and just old homemade boom. And I think it's four inch round. So uh, anyway, used the, the rollback that was Paul's to take my take it to the house, borrowed Paul's welder, 
and welded the trucks back together. Uh, pulled an old motor out of a uh, 68 Impala I had, you know, I traded for or something and, and found an old four speed and put in it. And I remember, you know, to this day, I didn't have a jack to jack transmission up and I was standing over the floorboard, you know, the floorboard unbolts in the center and I was picking up on the shifter. And my wife, you know, we probably hadn't been married, you know, two or three years by that time. Uh, she was out there putting blocks under to get the transmission up and, you know, I just had to do things the hard way. And I didn't have a winch, so I went and borrowed a winch off a buddy of mine. And it was an old hand crank, two speed cast iron winch, an old one. But I, I mean, it would pull good. You just had to have the muscles to do, use it. And uh, I'd pull cars out of the woods, do whatever I needed to do and hook up. And, and finally I got to where, you know, I could uh, quit working for Paul and went to work for myself. And uh, I wanted to get on highway patrol rotation. And, you know, of course, everybody said you can't get on rotation with a homemade wrecker. It's got to be rated by the manufacturer. And I figured, well, I was the manufacturer, I'll rate it myself. So I took a three-quarter ton pickup, and that was rusted completely out. I bought a cab for $25. Uh, I went to Lee Iron and Metal, and I could buy scrap, you know, at a, at a pretty cheap price. It was probably a nickel pound maybe back then or something. But, uh, so they had a, a big pile of... Uh, it was galvanized diamond plate and about eighth inch thick and don't know I've never seen any since then you know that was galvanized but it was pieces that was probably about three foot long and a foot and a half wide and I took all them pieces home and I, I built a record bed by that time I had bought me a uh, Lincoln uh, what do you call it a tombstone I guess is what they call it it's a uh, just the old uh, stick welder AC no DC uh, I used it to cut all the steel uh, I bought two new cylinders to raise and lower the boom, and I bought one cylinder to go in and out. And they were, uh, they were. I bought them from Northern uh, or Agri Supply. I'm sorry. I think I got them from Agri Supply. And uh, anyway, that was really the only new parts I bought. I made a trade with a guy that I'm still friends with. He's 80 something years old. Uh, really good guy. I traded him an electric winch that I had picked up. Uh, to do all the hydraulic lines and I would do the measurements and you know the, what fittings I needed and I'd run in his shop and he'd uh, make one up for me and I'd put it on so we, we worked out a trade there and I got all the hydraulic lines ran and uh, painted that truck and when the highway patrol come out to do the inspection and this was you know many moons ago uh, he come out stood around smoked a few cigarettes you know just BS for a little while and uh, Asked for my paperwork, I handed it to him, he signed off on it, got in his car and left. And I was doing rotations and I was worried to death about whether I was going to make it or not, whether I was going to pass. You know, I, uh, I even had to go borrow a set of uh, bolt cutters because you got to have bolt cutters on and that was the last thing I didn't have. I didn't have the money to buy them. So. Uh, but I, that's, that's how I got started. Uh, I don't recommend anybody to the record business. I know that sounds bad, but uh, the problem is, is to, to be able to get big and pay employees, you've, you've got to really charge uh, a lot of money. And, you know, to be able to cover everything because the insurance prices are so high and stuff. If you, uh, if you want to keep customers, uh, you know, you're going to be working for yourself. You're not going to be able to go do anything. There's no, uh, I don't go out to eat because uh, I, can't, I can't go that far. You know, if I go to, you know, this town that, to eat, then I get a rotation call in Harnett, in uh, Moore County, in another county, then I can't make it to the wreck. Uh, you can't go fishing, you can't, there's just so many things that you can't do. You can't make any plans whatsoever. And, uh, you know, for one thing, you better hope you got a good wife. And I'm very lucky that I've got a great wife. And, uh, you know, when we first got married, I heard a lot of, uh, you're working too many hours and too long. You know, I'd put 15, 16 hours a day in, worked 21 hours straight one time, come home for six and went back for 10 more. Uh, you know, and I, and I understand, you know, we was young and, and, you know, she would get on to me, but, uh, you know, she, she grew to understand that, you know, a man feels like he's got a, a job to do, you know, to raise a family and that's what you do. But the big turning point for me was when I got rid of them fast cars that I was spending money on and I started putting money into vehicles that made me money. That was the smartest thing I ever done. And it wasn't because as much I think that I wanted to make the money, it was the fact that I wanted to build the trucks. And once the trucks were built, 
and you can make money with it. And it worked out really well. But uh, nowadays, and just to give you an example, uh, you know, Bobby, my buddy, you know, y'all know that he wrecked his truck and you've seen the build and, and uh, that happened about two counties away and I didn't get that call. And Bobby, you know, went to the hospital. Highway Patrol had a, uh, another company come out to do it and which was too far away from me anyway and I don't have the manpower uh, when it comes to a job like that. So, you know, with being by myself now. But uh, they charged him $5,520. They used two 50-ton wreckers to turn that truck over and towed it here. And they didn't even want to bring it here. You know, I had to explain to them that this is where it needed to come and, you know, as long as we was paying the bill, then it needed to go where we wanted it to go. And uh, they was wanting to take the storage lot. Bobby was worried about his tools, which is totally understandable. So, you know, we went through a little trouble, but we got it, got it here. And... Uh, but $5,520, uh, I can't see it. I just can't see it. You know, you can't use the excuse that you went and bought two big records or you went out and you bought a rotator. You can't use that excuse for charging somebody more money than what the job's worth. And that's what a lot of record companies do. It bothers me. There's nothing I can do about it. I've argued about it. I've seen people use rotators to do pick up cars, you know, and, and swing them over a guardrail where you can do it with a, you know, with a one ton or, a, you know, a, a two ton or whatever with no problem. Uh, it's not right. Uh, complaining ain't ever going to get nothing done about it. I can just suggest to anybody that don't, uh, if you're not in the record business and you, one good thing to do is plan it out. And I've got people that plan it out, believe it or not. I've got people that call me, excuse me just a minute, but I've got people that call me that, uh, that want to set it up to where they know that if they get in a wreck, they break down, uh, and it, if their wife or their daughter, I hear that a lot, you know, if they, if they break down, will you come get me, you know, and, and about what would something like that cost? And, you know, I like the fact that when somebody's having a bad day, you know, their car broke down, you know, they're never going to be nice to me because they're mad about their car being broke down. But it's still a good thing for them to be able to take their problem and, and put it off onto me, and then I can take care of it. Uh, whether it be you know locking their keys in their car or a tire change or a jump start, you know, uh, you know winch out, somebody stuck, something like that. And uh, and you know, I would appreciate if if my wife broke down somewhere. Let's just say that she was driving out of town. I would really appreciate that a good rec, you know, reputable record service would would take care of her. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that would mean a lot. And I, I, that's what I try to be to the people. And, uh, you know, I've had, you know they, they'll call me and say, look, if I break down, you know, in Raleigh, would, would you come get me? And, I, of course, I tell them I would, you know, or go get their wife or something like that. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of good in the record business, but I don't, like I said, I just don't recommend it to anybody. And uh, it's, uh, it's a tough job when it comes to hours. And if you're going to hire an employee, you can't. I can't hire an employee to go work from eight to five because they can't afford to pay what they're worth unless they're planning on being on call 24 hours a day. And uh, the drivers I've had, you know, w was able to do that, and they put up with it for you know quite a while until they got tired of it. You know, uh, my son, he worked for me, and and you know he just told me that, you know, I want to get a regular job. I don't like the hours of a record service and I totally understand that because you know the day that it's raining really bad and, and you know or the night and you know it's one o'clock in the morning and it's cold and you go out and you do a call and you're just soaking wet you get back in and you know you get your clothes off and you get in the bed and get warm that's about time the phone's going to ring again you're going to go get wet again and uh, I've got quite a few coats and I've ran out of coats I mean you know just one after the other and I've matter of fact that's why I've got this hat on this is my son's hat but, uh, because I, my other hat's wet. And uh, so I just, you know, it's rough. It's a very, very rough job. Uh, you know, start out, if, if somebody's going to start out, start out with the motor clubs. You're not going to make as much money, but you're going to get your name out there. Uh, I've, I guess I've been in business about 20, 26 years now. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy it. It's not always good, but, you know, most of the time it is. Uh, 
But I'll quit rambling on here. And uh, if anybody's got any questions about getting into the record business or anything, you know, message me. I'll answer the best I can. But uh, again, I don't, uh, I don't recommend it for anybody. Not unless you just want to work your life away. That's what you feel like you do sometimes. And uh, you know, this is Sunday, and you know, a lot of people don't even work on Sundays. I drive by garages and just think about how how they make it on eight hours a day. I, I can't figure it out. Uh, today, you know, I wanted to work as much as I could on this car, and uh, you know, about the time you get into really doing something, either you know the phone will ring or you'll you'll have to leave. And uh, you know, uh, you never know where you're going to go. You might be here. And you know your your wife's in there making dinner for you. You know some some great you know chicken breast. You know something like that. And you're ready for it. And then the phone rings, and you could be you know 100, 200 miles away. So you you know you just don't ever know. Uh, you know not only will you not get the food, you might not you know you won't get it warm anyway. All right, appreciate everybody watching, and until uh, next time, bye.